Welcome to the second part of this tutorial. We're going to talk about the basics tab here. So the first thing I want you to do is press Alt and you see this reset down here. Go ahead and click reset. Okay. And when you do that, you're going to see the temperature is 2600 and the tent's 4. So when I go back to this white balance tool and click on the back of the wall, that will remove that color cast and it will change the temperature to 2800. So basically what this temperature thing does is it says if I'm taking a picture in a low color temperature, which is more of a yellowish, I need to add more blue to compensate, and vice versa. If I'm taking a picture in a high, higher color temperature, which is more bluish, I need to add yellow to compensate. So it, that's what the temperature slider does. The tint further customizes it by removing either magenta or green. Okay, This is the first step in which you correct a photo. Now the white balance, you can choose custom or as shot or choose different types here. Okay, and watch what happens. If I just move the temperature slider, it's gonna add more yellow. It's gonna make it warmer. That's not what I want. Make it back 2800. And the tint's gonna have more magenta or more green. It's not what I want. Let me click here to quickly go back. Now, one thing that I usually do is I'll select the white balance tool and select different points and see what I remember as being the correct color and then I'll further customize it here. Okay. Now you'll notice that there's a bar that goes across here, a little bar. What this means is if I click auto, this will change it back to certain settings but it won't affect the temperature and tint. So this bar separates this area from this area. So you work on temperature and tint first and then you further customize it with these sliders below. Let me click reset again and then let me select the eyedropper here, the white balance, and select it. Then let me zoom in by pressing Z to 25%. Okay. Now let now let me change it back to the hand tool. If you see the zoom tool active, I usually like to leave it on the hand tool because sometimes when I have the um, zoom tool active, it constantly zooming in and out accidentally and it drives me crazy. Um, so let's talk about what what is this first setting here? This is exposure. Exposure will adjust the brightness or darkness of an image, and it's also um, let's just say done in f-stop. So if I have one and a half, this is the same as saying I'm increasing the aperture one and a half f-stops. And as you can see here, we do need to brighten it a little. So let me increase my exposure a little to bring it over to the side, not too much. Okay. And usually if you're dealing with exposure, the next thing you're going to do is go to recovery. And the recovery will recover details from those highlights that you just increased. So let me just do this. And you can see here on the wall, look at the wall, you can see the greatest difference. So if I go extremes, it's just a little. Okay. Then the next setting that you'll work with is called fill light. And what the fill light will do will recover details from shadows. If you remember the um, shadow and highlights command, that's what that does. So it works in the shadow area to bring out the details. Okay. So if I click fill light, move the slider, as you can see, it's filling in the light in those shadow areas. If I move it all the way to the left, you can see the black is really black. So let me just increase it a little. If you're not happy with it, I believe you can just double click on the on the slider itself, which will bring it back to its zero default setting there. Okay. See, I want some detail in this black. I don't want it to be pure black. I want some detail, so I want to increase the fill light a little. Okay. Now the next setting is blacks. Blacks is the input levels are mapped to black in the final image. It's like the shadows and um, levels. So you can see here, watch. Oh, that's not good. So it remaps these pixels to darker blacks as you increase it. So I don't want to do that. I, want, I need my detail on my blacks, but I do want some darkness there. Okay. The next setting is brightness. This will adjust the brightness of the image. This will adjust the brightness of the image, but it compresses the highlights and expands the shadows. So look at this histogram up here as I do this. So it's at plus 50, which is at the fault. See, yeah, see. It will compress the it will compress it and expands it. See? So I'll just do a little bit here. I rarely use the brightness um, slider, just so you know, but, um, you know, hey, it's camera raw, so you can adjust and come back. It doesn't matter. Contrast. This is the next slider. Contrast will adjust the midtones. Increase, you get more contrast. Decrease, you get less contrast. Pretty simple. So you can see here. And decrease, and you can see that grayness coming back in. Increase, and it's over the top. 
Okay, just a little here. And a little bit more. Clarity. I love clarity. Clarity sharpens sharpens um, the clarity of edges. It helps to restore detail and sharpness that may be a loss from playing with these other sliders. Okay? Be careful with clarity because you can overdo it too. See, watch, how do I, okay, watch right here. Let's see what happens when I move the clarity quickly. See again? Brings it into a nice focus. But you don't want to, you can overdo it on this, trust me. So be careful with the clarity. And everybody's favorite tool, Vibrance. Why does everybody like Vibrance? Because it adjusts the saturation so that clipping is minimized. And what that means is it changes the saturation of the lower colors with less important on the saturated colors. So it affects the, the less saturated colors more than the saturated colors. So you, I can bring out the colors in the less saturated areas while retaining the saturated colors. And then lastly is the saturation tool. Um, this is if you decrease it to 100, you have one color, and then you can over oversaturate. So this, if you do it 100% here, this will double the saturation. I will, let me double click on it. I rarely use saturation, to be honest. Now let me fit and view by double clicking on the hand tool. Maybe zoom in a little here. Okay. Let me look at a before and after. So if I press P, here is the before, here is the after, before and the after, and as we can see, the exposure is way too much, so I'm going to bring the exposure back down a little. Okay. Let me see the brightness. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about the details tab.